gosh. <laughs> what you're looking at cannot be explained, not by pilots who witnessed it, not by scientists who examined it, and not by the United States government that investigated it. It's rotating. The first ever unclassified Pentagon report on UFOs is in. It doesn't crack the mystery. Still, it's a huge step forward. This is a sea change in policy of how to handle the UFO mystery. The task force examined 144 reports of mystifying objects in the sky. It is something that falls outside of our current understanding. Some might say paranormal or supernatural. How does anybody survive the crushing forces that would be generated by that kind of acceleration? The videos chronicled in the Pentagon report and witnessed by pilots are mind-bending. I'm absolutely open to this being something from another star system. Or they've always lived here. Tonight, never-before-seen video shot from a military ship. They don't really know if these are occupied. They don't know how they are propelling. They don't know where they took off from, and they don't know where they landed. But is the Pentagon report part of an ongoing cover-up? The radar data mysteriously disappeared. Not only that, but the deck logs mysteriously disappeared. And the cost to those who dare to speak out. The personal professional toll has been been severe. TMZ investigates UFOs, the Pentagon proof. UFOs, unidentified flying objects, have been the subject of intrigue, mockery, and even fear for decades. From the ridiculous... I warned you that these earthlings are dangerous. ...to the alarming... Oh, my God, dude. Oh, oh, hey, look at the pride. The Pentagon has released the first ever report on UFOs after examining 144 baffling incidents. It comes a year after releasing three videos, which it acknowledges are unidentified aerial phenomena. Some incidents include videos showing objects that defy human technology. What we're seeing are objects descending from 80,000 feet or above, dropping down to sea level, in less than a second and a half. Right. No sonic booms. The stop on a dime. There's no wings. There's no propellers. There's no jet engine. There's no exhaust. How would you control the direction? How would you navigate? How is this thing propelled? It's incredible. It's bizarre. The Pentagon report says there are five possible origins. U.S. technology, technology from a foreign adversary, natural atmospheric phenomena, airborne clutter, and other. The report says some of the objects could be American-made, but that means some just aren't. If the United States government doesn't know if it's their own technology, we have a bigger problem. If we had mastery of this technology, oh, you would see it. We don't make weapons we don't use. It's just a fact. They left that door cracked open as kind of a Hail Mary, but I'm certain at this point that, and, and so are many other people, that this is not our technology. We know they're not ours. We know it. We know damn good and well we didn't build those things. They're from somewhere else. And the people inside the Pentagon know that. As for foreign adversaries launching these objects, it's frankly hard to believe. We know these things have been in and around our skies at least since the early 50s doing exactly the same type of things that they're doing today. Lou Elizondo, a former Pentagon counterintelligence official, says it's outlandish to believe any foreign power on Earth has the technology. For us to think that there was some sort of foreign adversary country right on the heels of World War II that somehow managed to evolve technologically a thousand years ahead of the United States, and for the last 70 years it's been the best kept secret despite the billions of dollars we put into our intelligence community doesn't make sense countries like china who are stealing billions of dollars worth of our technology every year do you think that they would be doing that if they already had this technology 70 years ago we can easily figure out whether they belong to other nations avi Loeb is a harvard science professor we know what technologies other nations have. We can see the same technologies incorporated in other ways, or we can spy on other nations. So whatever humans can produce, we pretty much know. And if these objects behave in a way that cannot be 
produced by the current technologies that we possess, then another interpretation is needed. I have no idea what it is, but I think we should figure it out. Senator Martin Heinrich, a mechanical engineer by training and a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, scoffs at the notion China, Russia, or any other country on Earth has the ability to launch objects in the sky that move so erratically, so fast, and so stealth. I don't know what it is, but anytime you have legitimate uh, pilots describing something that doesn't seem to conform to uh, uh, the, the laws of physics that govern aviation and is in U.S. airspace, I think it's something we need to get to the bottom. So, if these UFOs aren't produced by humans, the Pentagon report suggests they might be natural atmospheric phenomena. But there's nothing natural about some of these UFOs. That's not at all what the pilots are reporting. They're not reporting weather anomalies. They're not reporting meteorites. They are reporting objects that are behaving in a very peculiar way. There is no atmospheric anomaly to date that we have that can explain that. My hunch was right. Former Senator Harry Reid is singularly responsible for the government finally taking UFOs seriously. He was the lone voice for years. What are these amazing machines? What kind of technology do they have? Where do they come from? What you just said suggested that this can't be a natural phenomenon. You talk about a machine. Well, you know, they tried for a number of decades to say it was atmospheric conditions, but that, that didn't sell. There's no known natural phenomenon that behaves like that, certainly that I'm aware of. It's not ball lightning. There's no atmospheric uh, counterpart to, to something like that. I would see them nearly every day when I was flying off the East Coast. Ryan Graves was a Navy pilot who flew F-18s. He's seen these objects and says scratch natural objects like rocks, meteors, or the like off the list of possibilities. They are flying in a formation that's pretty specific and that would seem to exclude a natural object because natural objects don't fly in formation. It's a difficult thing, I think, for just anyone to wrap their, their head around, right? Graves was stationed on the USS Theodore Roosevelt in 2015 off the coast of Florida when his squadron eyeballed a fleet of spear-like objects flying in formation at 25,000 feet, and it certainly caught their attention. Yeah, on, bro. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the SA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots from the west. Oh, I think, dude. That's not how that stuff, is it? That's not how that stuff, dude. Well, the first look at that thing. It's rotated. It didn't appear to be um, an outline of, a, of an aircraft. No skin of the vehicle, no, no real shape even, I would say. Uh, certainly no exhaust, uh, and that's what we'd be seeing whether they were in motion or not. One of Graves' fellow pilots described a near miss with an object that looked otherworldly. They said, I don't know how to explain this, but it, you know, it looked like a, a dark colored cube inside a sphere where the corners of the cube were touching the inside of that sphere. And he's like, I have no idea what that thing is, but we almost hit it. There's another incident that has befuddled pilots, scientists, Pentagon officials, and others. The so-called Tic Tac video recorded in 2004 on the USS Nimitz off the coast of San Diego, captured on a highly sophisticated surveillance device. The Tic Tac case is the best clearest example of a vehicle that's doing something that nobody that I have met or spoken with has a plausible explanation for. Christopher Mellon is the former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence. The Tic Tac descending in a matter of seconds from essentially 80,000 feet to sea level and then hovering and then instantaneously accelerating to hypersonic speeds. That's physics that we don't understand. How does anybody survive? How does the vehicle itself survive the crushing forces that would be generated by that kind of acceleration? That is 10, 50 times beyond the tolerance of anything we've ever built in terms of being able to withstand the forces that that would be subjected to, that, that vehicle. 
So then the report says possible airborne clutter. Birds, balloons, even plastic bags might account for some of these UFOs. But some experts say that's an easy straw man to knock down. Harvey, that is such But what we're talking about are, are machines of high performance that are flying with impunity, even within our restricted airspaces, including nuclear. These things are being seen going against the prevailing wind, being able to do things that balloons simply don't do. And again, birds don't fly at supersonic speeds. So the question, if some of these UFOs are not American-made, not from a foreign power, not natural phenomena or clutter, the only thing left is other. It is something that falls outside of our current understanding. Some might say paranormal or supernatural. It's simply something beyond our current understanding. Everything in science is paranormal or supernatural until it becomes normal. What is other? I don't know. We don't know. Look, we might have vehicles from other star systems that are visiting Earth. We can't take that off the table. So what could it be? Something completely and totally different, something paradigm changing. This could be something from outer space. Do you believe there is a civilization out there? Oh, definitely. If we shut off the curtains on our windows and do not search for neighbors, it doesn't say anything about whether neighbors exist or not, they may be out there and they may be smarter than we are. Uh, we are just maintaining our ignorance. The Pentagon report never even suggested the possibility these objects came from a place other than Earth. In other words, aliens. If we say it's always rocks, it's never aliens, then we behave just like a caveman that is presented with a cell phone and says, oh, the cell phone is just a shiny rock. I'm absolutely open to this being something from another star system, from some other mechanism of the universe we don't quite understand. Do you think that this has anything to do with an object or objects outside of our solar system? It's one of the possibilities you have to consider. Give me a second one. That they live here, that they've always lived here. Meaning? That they've always lived on Earth, that they've been here longer than us, that they're crypto terrestrials. Maybe they live in the ocean. Maybe they live here, separated from us by some thin psychic dimensional membrane that they move back and forth. There are a lot of exotic ideas that have been explored and discussed behind closed doors. We have to stop and really ask ourselves the obvious question. Whose is it? Who does it belong to? Where is it from? And finally, why is it here? Coming up. What was splash? Splash. splash. Mark Barrier Range. They're breaking the sound barrier without a sonic boom. You're talking about a, a method of propulsion that we don't have. They outperform, outmaneuver, outpace our greatest military assets. Plus, never before seen video of UFOs flying in formation above a fleet of military ships. Right now, the Pentagon spokesperson who's authorized to talk about this does not know that this video exists. But she will by the time you air this. Like, I'm not the only one seeing Dude. There are thousands of reported cases of UFOs every year. Most of them have simple explanations. A roaming balloon, a soaring military jet, a doctored image. But a relatively small number of these UFOs defy explanation and human logic. <laughs> and they have caught the attention of our military and now government leaders with the help of these two UFO pioneers, investigative filmmaker Jeremy Corbell and investigative journalist George Knapp. They're unknown craft doing things that we can't do. They're breaking the sound barrier without a sonic boom. You're talking about a, a method of propulsion that we don't have. They outperform, outmaneuver, outpace our greatest military assets. Knapp and Corbell have obtained photos and videos of some of these UFOs, shot by military sources, pilots, and captured on sophisticated radar and other devices. And the Pentagon has validated that they are indeed UFOs, a mystery. On the East Coast in Virginia is a massive naval air station called Ocean. And for a period in 2014 and 2015, they were seeing these things every day. These things were captured by an F-18 weapon systems operator sitting behind the pilot. Three images captured on a cell phone. 
So that one they called the Sphere. And what is really odd about it is it just sat there at about 30,000 feet in high winds and did not move. It wants to be seen. If you're stealth, you're not lit up like a Christmas tree. If you're stealth, you don't come in on gentle ascents towards warships. This was an orchestrated symphony of UFOs around these warships. They're, they're making themselves very obvious. If they want to be seen, why don't they go the full Monty and come down and show everybody? Yeah, why don't they land on the White House lawn? We put human qualities and human thought processes on them and try to figure them out and they might have a whole different way of seeing this thing. If they're seeing this phenomenon, why isn't the F-18 trying to get close to it? Well, hold on. They will go after them, and it's like looking at a stadium through a straw. These planes, at slowest, they're going 300 miles an hour, so they're going past it. It's pretty miraculous they got this photograph to begin with. You can't just, hey, I'll just pull up right next to this and take a couple right. of close-up file. <laughs> and there's more. July 2019, the Navy destroyer USS Russell stationed off the coast of San Diego. This flight was part of an intelligence briefing and chose three UFOs 700 feet in the air, swarming the ship. The slide was leaked to Corbell, and the military subsequently confirmed they are UFOs. One of them is blinking like it seems like an anti-collision light. They're moving at a fast pace with the ship, and at some point the ship stalled out or slowed down and they hovered so they're able to show controlled intelligent movement this event is a massive ufo swarm with 50 to 100 unidentified unknown now you can really see the pyramid shape it's yeah. just sort of rotating yeah and it has an irregular pulse to it with light it would seem to me a formation is maybe one of the most important things because you know, you can look at objects and they could be a hundred different things. But when you start seeing them move in an intentional way together, that seems to knock out natural objects that are present in our atmosphere. It seems like formation is really a critical component of all of this. You're absolutely right. We don't know where they came from, who's operating them. But if you've got a hundred of those things in different shapes circling our nine warships, that is a pretty powerful statement of some kind. And there's this, another leaked unclassified slide used by the military to brief intelligence officers, chronicling another incident in 2019. The USS Omaha was stationed off the San Diego coast. This radar video shows multiple objects swarming the ship, as many as 14, when suddenly one of them just disappeared. So you see here that there's a spherical in shape moving towards the surface of the water and then disappearing. Right? So the Omaha assessed the object had, quote, sunk. Whoa, it's getting close. <clears throat> yeah, we have a uh, 31 knots sustained wind, yeah. top side, gust 40. Uh, what was splashed? Splash. Splash. Mark bearing a rain. Attempts to search the water for wreckage were ineffective. A submarine was sent to look for wreckage or the vehicle, and they were unable to find any of that. They say splash, splash. Doesn't mean it splashed. It means it, they believe it went into the water. It sounds crazy, but could it be an object that traverses the skies and the ocean with ease? This is a transmedium vehicle, a vehicle that could penetrate that space between air and sea. No plumes, no heat, no exhaust. This thing is self propelled with intelligence. No wings, no tail, no thermal signature. No. The military has confirmed these photos and videos are authentically UFOs. They won't discuss them, and it seems there's good reason. The events at that time that will never be made public because of the inherent classification of the information contained within such things like radar or even satellite, just any other optic systems that might show a foreign adversary some of our techniques. So the problem is that by releasing all of this, then a foreign government can actually look at our technology and how we captured it, and that in itself creates a security risk so they can't go there. Exactly. You can't tell your friends without telling your enemies. So the irony to all of this is that the end game here is understanding what that is, but we can't say out loud, at least the government feels it can't, because it will then compromise the system it used to figure it out. Exactly. Coming up, the cover-up. Is the Pentagon UFO report legit? There are a lot of allegations that our government has recovered something that fell from the sky that was sophisticated and complex, but not made by humans. And later, 
never-before-seen UFO video shot from the deck of a U.S. warship. George and I are sitting on an archive of UFO information that we're finding responsible ways to put out to the public, and we're finding unique ways to do it. One of those ways is talking with you. UFOs have been chronicled in mainstream media for more than 70 years. Yet the United States government has done virtually nothing to clear the air. And it's not because it's in the dark. I think the government has physical evidence, and I mean materials, and I think entire craft, and maybe bodies. It's a shocking statement, and the issue's been raised by credible former Pentagon officials. There are a lot of allegations that our government has recovered something that fell from the sky that was sophisticated and complex, but not made by humans. There are people that seem credible who make those kinds of claims, and yet that is vociferously denied by everyone involved. So, you know, it leaves one wondering. We have wreckage, we have craft, we have intact craft, and we have been exploiting them in a variety of non-terrestrial exploitation programs. Do you think there are warehouses with this wreckage? I know there are, yes, correct. Yes. Have you talked to people in the government about that? Of course. Well, I, I'm not going to speak about the warehouse. Um, the intent uh, was to build facilities and structures that could potentially house material during the course of ATIP investigations. But that is true. That was part of the intent. If you're asking me if the U.S. government is in possession of exotic material, it is my belief that is true. But we need to we need more analysis on this material. This material does have some very interesting, uh, let's say, fingerprints or signatures associated with it. Lou Elizondo ran the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, ATIP, established to get to the bottom of these UFOs. But he resigned out of frustration in 2017 after 22 years of service because he says higher-ups refused to present his findings to then Defense Secretary James Mattis. I was facing significant resistance informing some of the most senior levels of DOD leadership about our findings. And I wrote in my resignation letter what I thought I think the boss needed to hear. And that was that these things are real, that we have real evidence from not only trained observers, but electro-optical devices and, and also from uh, radar data, and that these things were operating with impunity within controlled U.S. airspace. In his resignation letter, Elizondo referred to the inflexible mindsets of Pentagon bureaucrats, and he has a theory as to why. I think primarily stigma and taboo. When you think of the term UFO, you think of tinfoil hats, you think of conspiracy theories. And so I suspect with the reputation of Jim Mattis at the time, those folks closest to him were actually trying to protect him. Fast forward to the present. The Pentagon's UFO report may not be all it's cracked up to be because it was rushed, underfunded, undermanned, and frankly, decisions were made that were downright suspect. Last January, the guy who was in charge of the UAP task force, a very experienced guy, high ranking, was removed. He was supposedly randomly reassigned to another job right as they started the, the job. Is that suspicious? It, it's highly suspicious. The task force had only six months to do its job, and in many ways, it was set up for failure by being grossly understaffed. The two people remaining have lower security clearances, so even if they could find, say, the air Air Force files, the hidden goodies, they wouldn't have the clearance to receive it. They had full-time jobs. They were supposed to write this report in their spare time. This is your side hustle, write this report. <laughs> yes, kind of like that, yeah. I don't want to villainize the men and women who are putting this report together because I know them. They're good people. The problem is they haven't been given the resources, the authority, or the time to do the job that Congress expects. They're being set up for failure. And so, once again, here we are. We're doing this, this half-assed approach, excuse my language, on a topic that, that is fundamentally one of the greatest national security issues that we're facing today. Remember former F-18 pilot Ryan Graves, who saw UFOs every day in 2014 and 15? Well, when it came to reporting it to those who count, he hit a wall. Was there an effort to really try and, and see what it was that you were capturing? Did people from the Pentagon contact the ship and say, figure this out? Because it feels to me like if you don't know, it's a security threat. 
Mm -hmm. And it felt the same way uh, to us. You know, it's a big Navy, uh, and Lieutenant Graves wasn't necessarily in a position to start, you know, emailing uh, the Chief of Naval Operations or whoever was senior enough to look into something like this. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that it didn't result in action immediately. Even more troubling, some critical data from the now famous UFO detected off the USS Nimitz is nowhere to be found. The radar data mysteriously disappeared. Not only that, but the deck logs mysteriously disappeared. They're supposed to be in the National Archives. Someone from Congress asked the Congressional Research Service to go take a look. And the records for that limited period are missing. Not before and not after. So there are reasons. It's not just people that are extremely paranoid who are wondering whether there's something more going on here. The Pentagon now has destroyed my files and all my emails. That leads to the question, why the cover-up? We're getting some information. Most of it is leaked. They could help unmuddy the waters a little bit if they wanted to be a little more forthright with the, with the public about what was going on. Sarah Scholes, a science journalist and author, says the government has actually fueled the conspiracy theories. Yeah, I mean, historically, the government hasn't really helped itself in terms of if UFOs, if it, if it wanted to convince people that it wasn't. Keeping something secret, you know, there are documented times in the past where they have not been forthcoming about UFO investigations or their own studies of them. When the government hides something from you, the natural response is to feel like there is a conspiracy because they are not being forthcoming. And I actually think we're seeing a little bit of the same thing right now. Coming up, right now, the Pentagon spokesperson who's authorized to talk about this does not know that this video exists. Never before seen video shot from the deck of a U.S. warship by a crew member. They don't really know if these are occupied. They don't know how they are propelling. They don't know where they took off from and they don't know where they landed. You've now seen government slides, thermal imagery, and radar footage from the USS Omaha in July 2019 of what the Pentagon has confirmed are UFOs hovering above the ship a hundred miles off the coast of San Diego. But no one has seen video of this event until tonight. Video obtained by Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp. So you're out a hundred miles at sea. And these objects, which are real, tangible, hard, six feet in diameter or larger, lit up like a Christmas tree, doing movements and displays surrounding the warship. You'll now see what appears to be a plane coming up on the, on the top right to the left, and it's got the normal strobing. I'm not positive that's a plane. That's just what I assume they're showing to contrast. So the visual intelligence guy on the deck is filming out into over the water at 11 p.m. at night, about between 9 and 11 p.m., and these unidentified that our military could not identify, and these that are you know, swarming around the ship, here are two of them, and you see that they are self-luminous, that they are bright. And they're in a sequence of some sort. It seems like they're following each yes. other. Yeah, they're intelligently controlled, and they're not just hovering and floating without control. They are moving in full grid patterns, figure eights and circles around the ship, but not coming in at aggressive maneuvers, but more soft flowing maneuvers. That's why that triangle of kinetic action wasn't met, where you would then try to shoot these down. But we've got the thermal image in the dead of night, the radar that shows there are as many as 14 at a given time, and now the shot from the deck. So these are sphere-like objects? Yeah, so they, they're described as spherical in shape because the visual data we get from the thermal really defines that. It shows that there's no tail, no wings, no normal propulsion, nor are there heat plumes of normal thrust. I'm seeing two objects that are moving in a sequence together, yeah. and that's really interesting to me. Remember, there is an object hovering above the USS Omaha that these are kind of dancing around. That was happening on each of the vessels, and they are reporting to one another through comms. Are you experiencing this? Yes, I am. They're sending people to the deck to get visual. They're sending the Viper team to actually document and record. They're, they're recording in on their sensor systems as well.